Hey guys, Jimmy here. Welcome to England. It rains all the feckin' time. But today I'm somewhere pretty cool for something pretty cool. In the background there, as you can see, I am at Brands Hatch. Um, probably could have picked a better day for it, but hey ho, that's, uh, that's a UK for you. And the reason why I'm here is pretty rad. Huh? So I'm gonna be driving a radical SR1 a bit later on today around the Brands Hatch GP circuit. Um, to say that this came on very quickly is an understatement. It kind of just happened overnight, really. But really excited, a little bit scared because it's raining and race cars are fast, but it should be fine. I've had wet experience before, so hopefully I don't make a fool of myself. So I'm joined by Mechanic Tom. Mechanic Tom and Driver Tom. Tom just tells a bit about the car, the SR1. He tells a bit about what I'm going to be driving today. Right then, so this is the SR1, which is a 182 horsepower uh, little weapon, really. It doesn't weigh a lot, just about 580 kilos if you're the driver, which is capable of about 140 miles an hour. And you could do that pretty much everywhere. Well, I'm looking forward to getting out of it. Hopefully, no spills. So, yeah, it is snowing now. This is snow coming down. <laughs> Why? This is ludicrous. This is actually ridiculous. And don't worry, the irony is not lost on me of potentially driving this radical in the snow. It sounds like one of my videos, like how fast could I drive in the snow? <laughs> Let's find out, I guess. So the snow kept coming down and I must say much to my surprise the day just sort of continued as if it were normal very British you know just keep calm and carry on don't worry about the conditions but of course that meant that the air temperature was very cold and as such the track temperature was very cold plus very wet so with that I went out on my first passenger lap with Tom at the wheel and I'm very very glad I had the opportunity to go around with Tom because Tom of course professional racing driver knows the radical SR1 on like the back of his hand and I had no better tutor than to show me around but even with that and even having that faith with him as of course the uh, as the driver it was sketchy out there you can see by the throttle and brake inputs you're barely touching the brake coming into a braking zone almost 10 20 percent of the most of the long braking zones and any sort of throttle input under third gear you had to be so so careful not to spin the rear wheels coupled with that we're trying to find some grip on a non-traditional kind of wet racing line you can hear it going around druids here the front tires just scrubbing as tom tries to get the car turned and even using the throttle a little bit there to get the car to come around it really made um it was, it was a lot to take in for me as a passenger and it kind of got me a little bit scared i must say because i have driven in the wet before but nothing anywhere near this powerful or this light and you can see it here coming around clearways look just at the pit entry there that river of water just running across the circuit if you touch that on full throttle you're going to go hard into that inside wall because of how the track is banked so i was trying to keep all that in my head store whilst trying to also keep my head down on the straight something you don't know there's no windscreen on the passenger side of the radical so the uh, the wind lifts up your helmet so you have to try and hold it down on the straight but uh, after a couple of laps tom came back into the pit lane and it was time for me to have a go and uh, yeah i was uh, i was a little bit scared Okay, so it's coming up to my slot now to, to drive this thing. I've got to say, I'm, I'm pretty nervous, mainly because it's wet. I don't want to like spin or anything like that. It's, it's drying up a bit now because the, it's not raining, it stopped snowing as well. But um, no, I've been told it's a very sensitive car, especially in these conditions and the throttle as well. It's super responsive because it's just a really highly strung NA engine. So yeah i'm a bit nervous i i, I want to go out and push it because i don't get i don't get these chances very often but at the same time i want to not be super stressed about driving so i'm going to go and try and go somewhere in between drive a bit of a bit but also keep it between the lines that was a rotary master by the way So I rolled out the pit lane for my first time driving 
a radical at Brands Hatch. And I must say, a mistake they make is telling you how much the car is worth before you go out, because I had that in the back of my mind the entire way around the circuit. That, of course, coupled with the fact that I had 200 odd horsepower behind me, uh, a car that weighed just under 600 kilograms, and an experienced racing driver next to me kind of pointing out all my mistakes, and there were a few of them. It was quite stressful, but also really enjoyable. When you did manage to get some traction, you really felt the kick of the car, and it was so responsive, especially you got into the high RPM. You're at 7,000 RPM, you think, oh, I need to shift now, but you've still got another 2,000 RPM to go. So I started getting a bit more confident, started enjoying the car a bit more, and as you guys know, if you've driven anywhere, that's that leads to downfall, that leads to ruin. And I'm gonna shut up for a bit now, and you can see what happened. Got to build up, got to build yeah. up. You won't be past me on the braking zone on your third over the lap. Yeah, the lap it too. was coming along nicely to be fair, but that's the thing, there's a rise there and oh, it's such a God. sort of um, loose car on the back. But it was going well. Oh man, that's... <laughs> That works pretty well, huh? That worked really well. I was, I was, wait, yeah, I was, I was waiting to feel that. I was thinking, oh god, that's a lot of money. I, I, crossed, I crossed my arms up ready for an impact. Oh my word. <laughs> okay, attention to Pete, there are the yellow group to the Starline session started. That's the yellow group. Thank you. Okay, Pete, you've been looking at the rally cross by looks of it. <laughs> Strong floor. So, Tom, what do you reckon, mate? It's just muddy, it's all it is, it's fine, it still works. Still works. No damage. Yeah, that's quite embarrassing. Um, so what happened is I got a bit too overconfident, I think. We went over the, the crest, and just as I braked, um, the car did that, and the rears locked for a second, and then we were just passengers. So definitely something that is, yeah, I, I don't know. I went in being really like over, quite confident because of the, um, stuff with the, the BMW, but this is completely different. It's, I'm lucky that I have the opportunity to learn these things, but also at the same time came very close to you know, having a big crash, so I don't know. It's a weird feeling right now. But yeah, I've had my little kind of sulk in the corner, and I was, to be honest, as you can imagine, bit, I'm a bit shaken after that. Like, it's my first, my first big one. You know, my first time going off and thinking, am I going to have a big hit here? Am I going to be all right here? But I think the the best thing to do now is just get back on the horse as quick as I can. They've offered me, I mean, I, I came into the pits and even, the, even before I got out of the car, I was offered to go out again later on once it had been cleaned up, which is absolutely mad. So the guys here have been really kind to me, I think a bit too kind given the circumstances, but we'll go out there later on and hopefully the track will be a bit drier and I can just redeem myself somewhat. The sun's come out now, finally. It's, this is so typical UK, you have snow, rain, sleet, everything in the space of a couple of hours, it's mad. But um, yeah, the drivers are basically just doing that kind of like a grid shot now. And then the track opens back up again and I get to go out for the last session. Hopefully, this time I won't give the guys something to clean afterwards. And just like that, it was my turn to go back out on circuit in a now clean Radical SR1. I had a long chat with Tom during the break just to really try and understand what I did wrong and what I could do better in this session. Now. Luckily for me, this session was a bit different from the previous one because this one was pretty much entirely dry, bar clearways. Clearways still had a bit of standing water, so I still had to be careful through there, but otherwise the track was a lot quicker than it was before. Now I will say now before I get into any of this post-commentary that the second camera, the camera you saw in the first run, the one with all the telemetry on, that failed, unfortunately. Apparently, I'm told it's because of a wire came loose during some sort of incident that I can't possibly think of what that would be. <laughs> but, um, but essentially what happened is as soon as I left the pit lane, the camera just turned off. So we have to rely with this one GoPro camera, I'm afraid.
surprisingly, the difference between the car and the wet and the dry was just night and day. There was so much more grip and I was even starting to feel a little bit of downforce in some of the corners. I mean a little bit because my brain could not process the idea that I had to go quicker through the corner to get more grip. And I know that sounds silly given that I've driven about a billion LMP cars in Sims and Formula cars and all that, but it's not the same thing when you're sitting there and you're the one driving, especially after my first off at Paddock Hill. All the nervousness that I felt from the car before, all the twitching, all that just completely disappeared and what I was met with instead was a car that was just completely planted. I wish I had more time to drive the car because I was just starting to get confident going through gears, uh, going through corners, sorry, you know, one gear higher, taking the speed through the corner. Paddock Hill pretty much stayed as a bit of a nervous zone for me given that I had the incident earlier in the day but I'm fairly confident I could have gone through there in fourth gear and carried a lot of speed had I had the balls. But just like all great things to do with racing, as soon as you're getting into it, my time was up and I had to come back into the pit lane. So Tom, second time out. Uh, <laughs> this time, a bit better than the first time. What, what, what do you think of this time? Yeah, spot on. I mean, thankfully for yourself, the conditions completely dried out bar, maybe one corner. Uh, which gave you a chance to have a proper feel for the car. And quite quickly after sitting with you for a few laps, I realised that I'm just ballast and unnecessary weight and you'd get a feel, better feel for the car if you went out on your own. So I think you probably agree that you felt that the car's got good feedback to the point where you could progress the pace up really quite quickly. You picked it up really quite quickly, hence why I was happy enough to jump out of the car after just, I don't know, 10 minutes or whatever. Yeah, there you go. So, so spot on, yeah. Well, thank you, Tom, yeah, for, no, for your patience. I'm sorry for getting muddy earlier. <laughs> That's all right. You know, we'll do it. <laughs> so much more positive this time. Um, didn't spin, which is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> which is always a good step forward. Track was a lot drier, so there was a lot more grip. And even on, we weren't on slick tyres, we are still on sort of the wet kind of intermediate compound tyre. The grip was like something I've never felt before. And I wasn't used to it. You saw how cautious I was still being at Panic Hill. I was still a bit scared, frankly. But I think with a bit more time in the car, that will go away. But I really hope that today isn't my last time in it. But I wouldn't be surprised if it is, given the uh, performance earlier on. But that was a ton of fun, it really was. So I'm actually going to voice over this bit of video because pineapple hair version of me didn't realise how windy it was and you can barely hear what I'm saying. But yeah, that was my day at Brands Hatch and what can I say apart from it was amazing? Those things tend to be amazing. I always go home with a big old smile on my face. But for me, it was a big lesson to learn. I kind of went into the day thinking, oh, you know what? I've got some track experience behind me now. I've done quite a bit of karting. Uh, I've got a lot of experience here in the sim. I should be okay I should have a good kind of building block to start from but you really have to build up your speed in those cars you know I I went straight into it and on, as Tom said on that three I was starting to push and immediately I was humbled I was shown no this car demands more respect it demands a bit more patience with building up the speed and that was a really good lesson for me to learn. Now I've got to say a massive thank you to the guys at Radical for inviting me over and being so friendly. Even after I put their car into the gravel, the first thing they said to me is, yo, go back out, don't worry about it, get some more seat time, you'll get better. And I especially have to say thank you to mechanic Tom, who you saw in this video very briefly. He was incredibly friendly throughout and made the whole experience a lot more fun. I'll whack the radical social media stuff in the description below. They haven't asked me to do that, but I figured it's the least I can do given that I nearly ruined one of their cars. If you guys enjoyed the video, of course, make sure to hit the like button. If you really enjoyed it, hit subscribe and that bell notification icon. And hopefully in the future, we'll have more content around radical. We'll see. Take care. Have a awesome day. See you all next time.